Thank you very much. I'm just going to put the milk. I don't know if you're allowed to put it there, but hopefully it will stand up. So we kind of have a problem here in Australia that we're fat, we're flat broke, and we're lazy. So 65% of us, maybe not of those of us here, um, are obese or medically overweight. We're obsessed with national debt, even though we're one of the most affluent countries in the world. And we're lazy because all we do is click like on Facebook, even though 50% of us think it's an absolute waste of time. <laughs> but our biggest problem of all is our fear of failure. And so I always ask people, what would you do today if you knew you wouldn't fail? And so what would I do? I'd build cycling superhighways, I'd build a bikeway that floats made out of plastic, and I'd get everyone involved in city planning here in Australia. So my vision is that everyone should be able to ride a bicycle if they want to, regardless of their age, their gender, their physical abilities, their cycling experience, how expensive their bike is, because it's okay to buy a second-hand one from Lifeline, and what their road safety um, awareness is. And so today I'm going to talk about my three ideas to change the world. The first is completely revolutionizing our cycling infrastructure. The second is confronting our waste comfort and building um, infrastructure in the future out of plastic, out of the uh, milk bottle just there. And the third is involving everyone in cities of the future. And it's interesting because even the Queen thinks building, the, you know, building unusual and different things is okay. And she once said that sometimes I invent th uh, up to six things that are completely you know, unbelievable and possibly unfeasible before I've even had my breakfast. So if the Queen can do it, we can do it too. And so when I started off um, my work as a transport planner, the first conference I went to, the keynote speaker started by saying, if we always do what we always did, we'll always get what we always got. And I've kind of continued remembering that statement throughout my working life. And so I guess what we need to start doing um, is we need to ignite the fuse for change. We need to completely change how we think and what we do. We need to confront our waste and we need to experiment. And I was really lucky last year that I got to work with um, the team who Jay Silver works with, and we made um, musical instruments out of bananas. But it's all about experimenting and doing things in different ways. So my first idea is uh, cycling superhighways. Uh, they're eight meters wide. So that's a bikeway a little bit wider than this stage. Uh, they've got six lanes, so like a motorway. Uh, three lanes, slow, medium, and fast. Um, going in both ways, and they're completely separated from parked and from moving cars. And people think I'm crazy. They say that's wider than the roads. So that would be like having a whole bikeway the size of the width of Albert Street. And no one's ever done that before. Well, just because they haven't doesn't mean we can't. And so I was very lucky. I got a research grant, and I was able to go around the world and to see what the best cycling countries in the world had done to get people cycling. And then I came back to Australia, and I did some focus groups, and I went to cafes and yoga classes and hung out at Coles and asked people what would encourage them to ride a bike. And we think it's, you know, humidity or, you know, the weather. It's too hot in Brisbane. It's too hilly. But it actually wasn't any of those at all. It was because people uh, wanted to be able to be completely separated from all parked um, and moving cars. So if we build a proper bikeway, then people will ride their bikes. And so people have said, or 84% in fact, have said that they would ride their bike more often if they didn't have to go near any cars. And so some people said, well, you're the crazy English woman, um, and you think we're just going to get rid of roads and put in cars. And why is it so wide? Well, at the moment, if you go cycling with your family, you all have to go in a line, because the the, um, the cycleways are just too narrow. And so cycling is a social thing, so it'd be nice to, if you're going cycling with your friend, that you can cycle next to them, not that you have to yell to them because they're, you know, three metres behind you. 
And so, and it means that the fast people, the people who want to get dressed up in their spandex um, and cycle 100 kilometers an hour, um, or so they think, uh, they can go in the fast lane. And if you've got your children and they're on their stabilizers, they can go in the slow lane. So everyone's happy. It's just like going up the Bruce Highway. If you're in a crappy car, you can go in the slow lane. And if you want to get a speeding fine, you can go in the fast lane. So that's it. So we really need to change what we're doing here in Australia because at the moment we just do paint jobs. Uh, we go out and build a skinny little uh, bikeway made out of a bit of white paint and then we wonder why no one cycles. So that's my first idea. My second idea kind of came after I'd invented my first idea because I was very lucky to meet a lady called Jo and she was the skipper and the boat builder of, or she didn't actually do the building, she was the project manager of the boat build of the Plastiki boat, um, which David Rothschild um, created to sail from San Francisco to Sydney um, to talk about plastic. So, and then I realized that we could use this to build a bikeway. And imagine a bikeway out of these on Sydney Harbour or along the Thames in London. We'd be confronting our waste and building something that we need into the future. And so, I mean, it's just a work in progress. Uh, well, it's not really in progress, it's just a thought. So we could do things in a completely different way because we could be like David Rothschild and we could tackle the plastic problem that we have face on because there's never no away. We just think, oh, well, just, you know, this goes off to nudgy to the landfill and it's away. Um, and, but there's never a way away. So we could use our plastic as a new type of infrastructure. And then people say, well, it's not possible. So we've got, you know, a new kind of smart infrastructure, but we really don't know how to do it. So it's impossible. But why do we have always people working in universities and people in consultancies and people in architecture practices? Why don't we have you know, smart thinking and we all come together and work out the solution? And then we need smart funding because the government doesn't have any money anymore or not much anyway. And so why don't we find new ways to fund our cycling superhighway made out of plastic on the Brisbane River? And at the moment when you book um, uh, airline ticket, you can do carbon offsetting. But for all we know, the money could be used to pay for drinks in the Qantas Club. So how about we had a yes and a no, and I'd like to fund a floating cycling superhighway option. And maybe you could have a green boarding pass, and then the money that you donated would go to pay for new infrastructure that we need in our city, um, and you could stand at the front of the queue, and that would be fantastic. And then the final part of the floating plastic cycling superhighway, which we've paid for out of our carbon um, offsetting and all the students and all the professionals have worked together to work out could be a multi-use piece of infrastructure. Because at the moment we have roads that are just for cars and we have busways that are just for buses and we have cycleways that are just for cycling. But how about if we had a piece of floating plastic infrastructure on the Brisbane River, which was also a water-based urban gardening solution. So you could cycle from here to New Farm Park on something that was using our waste and you could grow herbs and you could pick herbs and you could have all your vegetables for the week by the time you got to New Farm Park. So we need to basically think about um, our infrastructure and what it does and how we use it um, into the future. And my third idea is to involve everyone in planning cities for the future. Because at the moment, you just go to the council and you get a bike map and it shows you all the lines on the map of where there's a cycle uh, lane. But we all um, are very different in, in our cycling. Some people like to get dressed up in Lycra and some people don't. And some people have bikes with baskets and some people have very fast carbon fiber bikes. But that map doesn't show you what, um, what your cycling standard is in compared in, um, compared to the map. And so we did a fantastic project. It was an experiment because uh, it's really important to not have the finished product all the time that you can do experimental projects. So we did a project in Berlin last year where we got everyone, regardless of how good or bad um, or experienced they were at cycling, to rate streets on how safe they were for cycling. And in the beginning, people thought it was rubbish and then they thought it was a good idea. And so we had thousands of people um, collaborating and working together uh, using a free piece of um, 
um, IT software and some Google Maps, um, and people rated streets on how safe and good and cycle-friendly they were for all types of cyclists. And I think it's really important if we really want to change the world and have new ways to do things um, that everyone is involved, not just the people who shout the loudest. And so what's the benefit in cycling superhighways, in floating bikeways using our waste plastic, and in everyone being involved in cities for all of us? Well, if you're a mum and dad and you've got kids and you want to go cycling, all of these things make it safe for you, and it's much more social and it's much more fun if you can have a safe cycling experience. If you're a property developer or a construction company, it's a great idea and it's a benefit for you because you can build more units and more uh, townhouses with less car parking, which saves you money and it saves the person who's going to get the mortgage um, some money too. If you're a member of parliament or you're an elected member, it means everyone has better access to everywhere that they want to go. And so that makes the people who live in your um, area much healthier and much fitter, and everyone is much more safe. And finally, if you're a shopkeeper or a cafe owner, it's probably highly likely that the more people who are walking and cycling in the area where you have your shop or your cafe are going to be spending more money in your shop. It stands to reason we know that from research done in other areas. And finally, I'd like you to remember this short phrase, just two for you. Because if we all made just two trips by bicycle each week, and that's just cycling to the cafe tomorrow morning for breakfast and back home, and if we all made just four trips by foot, each week, so that's walking to the gym and back only on Mondays and Tuesdays. You can drive to the gym, as far as I'm concerned, every other day of the week. Then 30% of all our trips in Brisbane or anywhere else in the world would we be by active transport. So yes, the cycling superhighways and the floating bikeway and involving every single person in our city in planning the future is actually quite complicated, but the very first step for all three of those projects are just two for you. Thank you very much.